this is Joe Biden speaking in California uh, about the, the Super Tuesday results. He's pretty pleased with what has happened. It's still early, but things are looking awful, awful good. For those, for those who have been knocked down, counted out, left behind, this is your campaign. Just a few days ago, the press and the pundits had declared the campaign dead. And then came South Carolina, and they had something to say about it. And we're told, well, when you got to Super Tuesday, it'd be over. Well, it may be over for the other guy. So I'm here to report, we are very much alive. We are very much alive is a new one when it comes to, to, to rallying cries when you've just become the front runner in the race to be, to be president. Uh, but oh well, that wasn't actually the most awkward moment in his victory speech. This happened at the start of the speech. By the way, this is my little sister, Valerie, and I'm Jill's husband. Oh no, this is the, oh, you switched on me. This is my wife, this is my sister. They switched on me. Uh, that was Biden confusing his wife and his sister, uh, which is, you know, reassuring when, when we think that this is, you know, 50-50 chance is going to be the person who the Democrats put up against Donald Trump. Uh, I mean, you could, you could say this is good for Bernie Sanders because now it's just him versus Joe Biden. And I mean, we're going to look at, we're going to look at some more examples of this a bit later in the show, but Joe Biden does struggle uh, sometimes on stage to be Can coherent, we- to finish sentences, to not repeat himself, to, to recognize his wife. How do you see this developing as the primary goes on? I kind of agree with the people who have said that the Joe Biden campaign is elder abuse. Like, the man is clearly not doing well. In that first clip you played there, he sounds like he's having a stroke. He's not even, like, I can't actually make out what he's saying. And it's, like, it concerns me on many levels, one of which is that he will lose, almost certainly, to Donald Trump, who will make mincemeat out of him when he talks like that on stage. Um, The other thing that concerns me is like, if my God, he becomes president, you know, like, is this man remotely coherent? I mean, we already had Ronald Reagan running through this with like the early stages of Alzheimer's when he was president. And I, you know, I don't want to be ableist here. However, I would like the president to be relatively aware of what's going on. But I mean, he'll lose. I said this on Twitter yesterday before anybody voted that if Biden goes up against Trump, he'll lose worse than Hillary Clinton did in all the same places that Hillary Clinton already lost because the same people who hated Hillary Clinton hate him. You know, the Insta pundits, you know, everybody's a pundit now. They say, elections are won from the center. He said, let's just get down what to- What does ba- that even mean? Let's just get down to basics here. He can't finish sentences. <laughs> you know, I don't care if he's a Marxist, Leninist, and a narco capitalist. He can't tell his wife from his sister, okay? There are big problems here. There's a great film from the 1980s, ironically called Weekend at Bernie's. It's mm. about two guys that go to this guy's a- uh, uh, weekend summer house and he dies and they have to pretend a weekend he's still alive and at this point that is effectively what the democratic establishment is doing with joe biden you've got you know the dnc and the big donors they've got their hand up joe biden's ass it's like emu with rod hull and they're sort of move the, the the mouth is moving often doesn't make much sense but like you say you said at the start you've got so many negative ads going out through tv networks and so on kind of doesn't matter and that's a big lesson by the way for the left same as what we learned in this country. They're now learning in the US. Legacy media is really powerful. You can build a movement, yeah. have a great ground op- operation, have great yeah. canvassing, great new media. Yeah. Right, in 10 years, that's gonna, win a, that's gonna win you nominations. Right now, it's actually still touch and go. Well, and you're talking about somebody who has some residual good feelings for having been Obama's vice president, right? Like Joe Biden has run for president now three times. This is the first time, uh, Saturday was the first time he'd won a primary. Um, This is a guy who did not really get very far for a lot of really big negatives. I cannot say Joe Biden without saying Anita Hill. Um, But he now has this sort of, you know, image that like The Onion used to make these joke articles about, you know, Uncle Joe Biden washing his Trans Am on the White House lawn. Like he did get this sort of cuddly Uncle Joe image after eight years in the Obama White House, there's a lot of people who would, in fact, sort of like to just go back and pretend 2016 didn't happen. We in here know that that's not a possible politics um, because the planet's on fire, among other things. But there is that feeling. And so for people who like aren't super high intensity 
election watchers like, you know, the people in the UK who are watching this election more closely than most of the people who voted yesterday. Um, Joe Biden has that thing. And, and somebody was noting earlier on Twitter that like Joe Biden did better in the states where he hasn't been campaigning than the ones where he has. He did better in the states where he hasn't been on the ground than in the states like Iowa and New Hampshire and Nevada, where the candidates have been on the ground for a while. And that is because the more you see Joe Biden, the more it becomes clear that the man has lost his dang mind. 